Good morning, uh, or good afternoon, actually, good evening in India. Uh, I am Nicola Napoli, and uh, I first would like to thank uh, the organizing committee and the Professor Guillermo Imperez uh, to have uh, invited me. It's a great honor. I wish uh, next year that uh, we make the same in, uh, in my uh, Mediterranean Sea right now. So I, I wish you were here with me right now. We could have a nice uh, uh, event together in, uh, in Italy. Uh, so the, the physical exercise and the abilities is a huge, um, I would say, interest in the last years. So there's been a lot of effort. Several, uh, societies and communities and with the healthcare providers, but uh, still uh, physical exercise is for patients with the and uh, in general with obesity. So the the why physical in activity is important in healthy people. So there is a problem because uh, inactivity and of age related insulin resistance causing the onset of obesity. And we see physical inactivity factors associated with chronic disease incidents, including heart disease. Yes. Okay. 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 Let's see how should I do. It will improve. Uh, sorry about the action, but uh, actually, uh, I, I I gave a talk this morning. It was okay. So I hope. Uh, okay. Okay, thank you. So I was saying that the physical inactivity is uh, associated to uh, insulin resistance, obesity, and uh, diabetes. And physical inactivities uh, and uh, inadequate diet are major factors associated to chronic diseases like heart diseases, stroke, type 2 diabetes, diabetes and uh, other kinds of, uh, and some ty types of cancer. And of course, is also a major cause of uh, death. So the, in obese patients, it's very important, the effect of uh, weight loss, and you discussed this uh, topic with uh, the previous speaker. Uh, but uh, whenever we suggest to patients in the diabetes clinic uh, or in an obesity clinic uh, to lose weight, uh, we uh, start calorie restriction to uh, patients. We should know that uh, if we don't, suggest also mm -hmm. physical exercise, we will uh, cause uh, a decrease in all body, but also lower extremity lean mass reduction, suggesting also skeletal muscle trophy, reduction in aerobic capacity, uh, capacity and catabolic activity on the cardiovascular system. So it's very important that mostly if we discuss about in patients, just weight, they will lose also lean mass, they will lose muscle and sensitivity, and the risk of diabetes will remain the same. So exercise preserves and improves lean mass and the, the absolute aerobic capacity, capacity, and this puts the improvement of physical function, preserving, resting, uh, uh, weight regain. As you know, the physical activity to get diabetes, and when we put this cocktail of factors like this uh, um, environment pollution and uh, inflammation, oxidative stress, all these factors together increase the risk of uh, cardiovascular disease. In
England a few years ago. We randomized obese subjects according to was group of control subjects. Uh, exercise was uh, basically exercise supervised by physical therapy, exercise, 30 minutes of endurance, and 30 minutes of resistance, and 15 minutes of balance. These were all the obese, elderly, frail subjects. And uh, after one year of intervention, patients uh, were on diet and exercise, and uh, in the diet group, lost, uh, as we uh, actually planned, they lost uh, 10% of uh, their body weight, contrary to the patients who were controls or just exercising. But when we analyzed the effect on, uh, on physical function and on quality of life, we found that patients on a diet plus exercise had an improvement in PPT, that is very important measure for frailty, so the physical performance test. They had a better VO2 and a better functional status questionnaire. But all these measures are associated to frailty and are associated also to improvement of adipose uh, inflammation, adipose tissue-related inflammation. And uh, surprisingly, we found that also analyzing uh, the mini mental state, uh, so the memory of the patients, the word fluency, the executive functions of the subjects measured by trail A and trail B tests, and the take the patient scale. All patients who were on diet and exercise did much better than the subjects. So the secret, if we want to improve health of these subjects, mostly in elderly age, is not just uh, suggesting to lose the diet, to lose the weight. So we should not just put them in a weight loss program, but we should also suggest exercise. But again, when we, we advise both diet and exercise, an improvement in all measurements related to frailty, related to cognition and mood. But uh, not all exercises are the same. So that was uh, conducted by Dr. Villarreal and published five years ago. They found also that the combination between aerobic and resistance is perfect in, term, in terms of frailty, in terms of peak oxygen consumption, uh, in lean mass, uh, and also in terms of BMD. All these measures, again, are important because are associated to lower inflammation, are associated to better insulin and uh, in fact, uh, we know from this meta-analysis, the physical exercise reduces the visceral adipose tissue. In reducing visceral adipose tissue, we have a better insulin sensitivity, and we have also lower inflammation, meaning basically the subjects have lower risk of diabetes and lower risk of uh, cardiovascular events. But again, not all exercise uh, is the same. Because according to this meta-analysis, aerobic exercise uh, is better in terms of uh, reducing visual deposit tissue compared to progressive resistance training or uh, their combination. This is the meta-analysis that uh, may again suggest that the aerobic exercise is the best way to train our patients and improving adipose tissue and fat mass. Uh, but importantly, when we uh, put together the data related to physical activity and the onset of only and clearly associated. And in this in meta it was also proved that lifestyle and diabetes are used also on long exercises for over uh, seven or 10 or 13 years. So we, we, uh, uh, with a reduction. And, and this is another study that has been just published by Dr. Villarreal, in, and uh, it was a, a study that was funded 
by the American Diabetes Association and the president, uh, um, Pierrez, who is uh, there in India right now, with you, was in the of the study and it's very important according to healthy lifestyle and the other 50 subjects were, were randomized to intensive lifestyle and at the end of the study that was uh, lasting one year basically patients who lost with the intensive lifestyle and not on healthy lifestyle of uh, uh, the intensive lifestyle, uh, authors found a reduction in what was the primary out strong effect on A1 patients were treated just for one year with the lifestyle and the intensive lifestyle intervention. And then in terms of second, secondary outcomes, author, authors found an improvement in insulin sensitivity and uh, uh, and uh, secretion, they found an improvement in uh, OMA index. There was a reduction in visual adipose tissue, an improvement in the physical function and quality of life, better VO2, better uh, muscle strength, gait speed, and uh, physical activity. So all these parameters, all these secondary outcomes prove again that uh, physical exercise is extremely important, even in diabetic subjects, to improve metabolic um, outcomes. In, again, OMA index, uh, insulin sensitivity, and uh, A1C, but also improving physical function. And this improves also the, uh, the, the chance that these patients are less frail and they may reduce the need of uh, medications. And uh, in fact, if we use medications in diabetes and we analyze the effect of, of a single medications plus exercise, the effect on glucose control, on exercise tolerance, on uh, in general cardiovascular disease, risk, uh, cardiovascular disease risk is different according to different medication effects is obtained still with metformin and with uh, GLP-1, medication plus exercise is effective on reducing A1C, fasting glucose rate and VO2, improving lipid, lipids, body weight. And so when we associate a medication like GLP-1 analog analogies that, that are medications plus exercise, we obtain a great effect on not only on glycemic control exercise, cardiovascular disease, disease risk. Then it's how important it is to avoid the breaking the sitting of the subject. In fact, if, uh, if you look if you look at the glucose tolerance test and uh, the risk of hyperglycemia in uh, subjects who are having a normal life, so if you compare to sitting less to bring this, there is an improvement in the subject who are sitting less in terms of uh, uh, glucose, con glucose, uh, according to glucose tolerance, uh, hyperglycemia, and OMA index. And this is uh, because uh, this study was the basis or also for the recommendations releases, released by ADA in 2022, and uh, we'll go through these recommendations in the next slides. Again, I suggest sometimes to break the sitting, to asking patients to do not sit for more than 30 minutes because uh, this improves the glucose tolerance and uh, um, all other metabolic related factors. And uh, when we apply exercise to these patients, there is also an improvement in ectopic fat. In uh, and again, this is another important. Uh, a topic for improving glucose tolerance. Anyway, there are other studies that I 
which will not go through all the details, but I would like to uh, show also that uh, high intensity intermittent exercise improves the cardiac structure and function and, and reduces liver fat in patients with diabetes. For example, in this study, uh, were randomized subjects to routine care, supervised aerobic exercise or low energy diets, and uh, was good also to use only proving exercise catheter in a glycated hemoglobin and reduction. Left ventricular PID early solution, that is one of the earliest manifestations of the cardiomyopathy. So basically, if you look at the effect of exercise, and those subjects who were on exercise were those who had an improvement. And there are other studies that will go just quickly on exercise and, uh, for example, an exercise on heart rate, on diabetic neuropathy, diabetic foot ulcers. So there are several studies addressing any aspect, any complications of uh, diabetes. Uh, and uh, there is also an important uh, uh, analysis showing a, a positive effect on diabetic retinopathy, proving basically that exercise uh, uh, may have an effect also on uh, diabetic retinopathy and uh, can prevent also gestational diabetes. So uh, there are no doubts that exercise is important to prevent uh, diabetes, but to prevent also all the complications related to diabetes. And these are the recommendations from ADA published on the Standards of Medical Care in 2022, reminding that children and adolescents should have uh, a very intense physical activity during the week with at least 60 minutes per day or more of moderate or vigorous intensity aerobic uh, exercise every three, uh, at least three days a week. And in terms of adults, most of adults with diabetes should have, uh, should be engaged in 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous intensity aerobic activity every week. In associate aerobic with uh, resistance exercise, and it's important also as I said before, the prolonged seating of patients and should be interrupted every 30 minutes and uh, in order to achieve a bit. And uh, it's important also in order to prevent falls and to improve muscle function to uh, associate also flexible training and balance exercise. And all this data, all these recommendations are based basically on the data that I showed at the beginning. Uh, that have been for diabetes subjects. In, in conclusion, physical activity is associated with an increase of diabetes. Physical exercise should be promoted in patients with diabetes, improve glycemic control and body fat composition, physical performance, physical frailty, and uh, quality of life. And when associated with the glucose lowering therapies, physical activity enhances their efficacy on diabetes management. And the physical exercise promotes the prevention and improvement of diabetes complication. Finally, physical prevents. I would like to thank all of you for your attention, hoping that uh, connection problem did not affect my presentation. And I'm available, of course, to send you my slides, uh, or, uh, and uh, I'm, of course, available for uh, any. Uh, questions you may have. But again, if you need my slides and to share my slides with the audience, it will be a pleasure to send uh, to the conference uh, the main slides. Thank you so much.